join kids hat family Lucky cat if the other boys hadn't come she would have lost the fight she should have just run away instead of fighting with such a big dog she was bound to lose against a dog i don't think so tofu dogs are more powerful than cats dear maybe so but when you have courage and fight with intelligence you can win against anyone the jungle book once in the heart of a thick jungle lived a little boy called mowgli He did not belong to the jungle as he was a human child. Yet he grew up with a family of wolves. His mother Raksha cared for him as she cared for her other pups. Careful Mowgli or you'll fall off the ridge. No ma, I won't. See you later. And so Mowgli took off into the jungle to find his friend and teacher Bagheera. When Mowgli had been a small baby, no more than a year old, he had been found and saved from the forest fire by Bagheera. Of course nobody knew who Mowgli was but they always believed he came from the man village at the outskirts of the jungle Bagheera had handed over Mowgli to the wolves so that he could have a family to grow up with Since then Mowgli had learned the ways of the jungle from his family and his friends Bagheera and Baloo He ran like them, hunted like them, climbed trees like them, and also spoke like them. Hello, Bagheera. What are you going to teach me today? I won't be teaching you today. Today, Balu has something planned for you. Let's go fishing in the river. Hello, Balu. Let me get a stick to make a spear for fishing. You don't need a spear to fish. But it makes it easier. You can't do it like that, Mowgli. That is not our way. Then how is it that I know how to make a spear, Balu? Who taught me that? As usual, Bagheera and Balu did not have an answer to Mowgli's questions. The forest fire had started. and destroyed the man village and nobody lived there for a long time bagheera had tried many times to find someone to return the child to but no one was there When the village settled again, the men put sharp barbed wire fences and laid traps to keep the animals at bay. Although the animals couldn't understand why, all the creatures of the jungle had always maintained a safe distance from the humans. They never meant any harm to them. 
In any case, the fences and traps made it impossible for Bagheera to return the child back to the human world. Okay, we will do it without a spear. Let's go. The trio set off to the river bank where Balu showed Mowgli how to catch fish without a spear. Balu would swiftly duck his head into the water and come out with fish in his mouth. Mowgli gave it several tries. before he was successful. The day passed in the lesson and they decided to head back to the wolf pack. Almost reached home when Bagheera alerted the other two. There was someone in the bushes ahead in the far right. Soon the others could see a pair of fierce eyes with a scar that ran across the left one, emerging from the bushes. Then the whole figure stepped ahead. Run, Mowgli! Run! Immediately, Balu and Mowgli took off towards home, leaving Bagheera to fight the large, villainous tiger, Shere Khan. Bagheera and Shere Khan immediately leapt at each other. Sher Khan hadn't expected Bagheera to be so strong and was taken by surprise when he managed to throw Sher Khan against a large tree. The elders of Wolfpack soon joined them. Sher Khan knew he was injured and outnumbered. You might have saved him today. But the human belongs to me. I will come back for him. Shere Khan, what are you doing here? This is not your territory. No territory can keep me out. And the next time I come, I will not spare anyone who stands in my way. The jungle knew that Sher Khan's threats were not to be taken lightly and soon worry spread in the wolf pack regarding Mowgli's stay and the pack's future. I can defend myself. I will not let any harm come to my family and friends. I know a way to put an end to this. Mowgli gathered Bagheera and Balu. I know how I came to the jungle. I have seen Sher Khan's eyes only one time before in my life. He attacked our village when I was small. To scare him, the elders used to fire. But he took me and escaped. And the whole village caught fire. When my father followed him to save me, he killed my father. 
That is why the villagers have put traps and fences now. Yes, but now we will stop Shere Khan forever. We know where he sleeps in the day, at the foot of the small mountain on the other side of the river. The bulls feed on the grassy slopes of that mountain. If we can scare them to run down the mountain, Shere Khan won't stand a chance. That is a good plan, Mowgli. The trio assured the others that they had found a way out of their troubles and by tomorrow night, all will be fine. Early next morning, the three set off for the mountain. They went around it and climbed it from the other side so that no one could see them coming. Once on top of it, they could see the bulls eating the grass. Ah! The three leapt at the quiet bulls and rushed towards them, screaming so loudly that the bulls got scared and started running down the hill to escape from them. The plan was working. The whole mountainside shook and rumbled under the stamping of the bulls. This woke up Shere Khan. He saw the bulls rushing towards him. There were scores of them. Scared, he started running away from them. He is trying to get away. I won't let him. Mowgli took the tress and swung himself from branches of one tree to another. On the other side, Shere Khan couldn't keep ahead of the bulls. Their sharp horns poked him and he got trampled under their feet. One would have died, but Shere Khan wasn't an ordinary tiger. He was evil and trickery was his second nature. He latched onto the horns of one bull and tugged at him. Agitated, the bull threw him aside and over the side of the plateau. Shere Khan held to the edges of the plateau and started climbing up. He had almost made it when a small tree trunk hit him in the face. He lost his grip and fell to his death. It was Mowgli. He had reached the spot and found a small tree uprooted by the bull stampede. With his quick thinking, he had thrown Shere Khan to his end. He had saved himself and protected the entire jungle from the tyranny of this villain. Bagheera, Balu, and Mowgli returned to the wolf pack where everyone rejoiced on hearing what had happened. So you see Tofu, to win, you don't always have to be the strongest. If you have courage and think intelligently, you can win against anyone. Yes, Tia, now I understand what you meant. Shall we go down and play with our friends now? Yes, let's go. The boys in my class are very mean to me. They are so tall and big that I always have to listen to whatever they say. 
I am afraid to disagree with them. Size has nothing to do with courage, Tofu. You don't have to be afraid just because you are short. Have you heard the story of Peter Pan? Peter Pan Once upon a time in London the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children Wendy John and Michael at home After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed she went to read a book She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying? My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me. Don't worry. Come inside. Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there with my fairy Tinkerbell. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Let me wake up John and Michael too. Could you teach us how to fly? Yes, of course. Get them. We will all fly together. And so it was. Five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards Neverland. As they flew over the island, Peter Pan told the children more about his homeland That island is Neverland All the children who get lost come and stay with Tinkerbell and me The Indians also live in Neverland The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island and a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone Captain Hook. Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles, and rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John and Michael, Peter Pan led them in through a small opening in a tree. Inside the tree was a large room with children inside it. Some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone. This is Wendy, John and Michael. 
they will be staying with us from now on. Hello, Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there, or else I will throw each one of you into the water! The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge. That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said, if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed, although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly. The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch. And onto the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up. He swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. Quickly, he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water 
where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said he never wanted to grow up so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime Peter Pan. I will Wendy, promise. And he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Thank you, dear. I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. Tia, today I am very happy. I met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and color. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange-looking man came to the town. He was dressed in their traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, "Ah." I have a solution for your problem. I assure you 
that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want ten gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats mesmerized by his tune fell into the river and drowned. There were rejoices in the town, celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shunned him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favor, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. 
This time, they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags. I don't trust you any longer. I want my prize money beforehand. Soon, he was handed over his prize money. And he left, never to be seen again. The children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried. Watching this, the authorities said, We surely have learned a lesson. This man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic. All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night, the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It still said that in the town of Hamelin, if you ever go and listen carefully, you might hear the beautiful sound of the Pied Piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. <laughs> Dia, you recite so many stories to me that are full of morals, but you have never recited your favorite story to me. Which one is it? <laughs> Tofu, that's true. I haven't yet recited my favorite story to you. Would you want to listen to one of my favorite story? Yeah. Jack and the Beanstalk Once upon a time, there lived a widow with her only son, named Jack. Their times were really hard and they were living in poverty for long. Jack was too young to work and earn money. All their house furniture and other belongings were sold off to carry on with their basic daily needs. Until at last they were left with a cow who used to give milk every day and that they used to sell off in the market to buy bread. One day, the poor old cow didn't give any milk. That's when Jack suggested his mother. I think we should sell off this cow and get a good return in bargain. So Jack left to sell off the cow in the market. On the way, he met a butcher. Oh! Where are you going, Jack? I'm going to the market to sell off this cow for a good bargain. Oh, why take the trouble to go that far? I have a very good deal for you. He took out five strange-looking beans from his pocket and handed them to Jack. Jack looked little hazed as to what kind of good bargain it is. Oh my God! They are so beautiful! What do you call these? Beans. Magical beans. If you plant them overnight, by the next morning, they will grow up and reach the sky. Wow! Mother would be so happy to see them. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. And off went Jack happily to his mother and showed her the magical beans. But to his disappointment, she only got angry at him and shouted. Off you go to bed right away. She threw the beans outside the kitchen window and into the backyard and went off to her bed crying and weeping. The next morning, when Jack woke up, he saw outside his window and to his surprise, he saw a great beanstalk reaching up to the sky. 
Oh my god! This beanstalk is so huge! I need to climb this up to see where it leads to. He climbed up and up and up till his home looked a mere spot on the ground. At last, the stalk ended and Jack found himself in a completely different place. But suddenly, a beautiful lady appeared and said, Hello Jack, you don't know me, but I know you and everything about you. The castle you see there belongs to a giant who stole all your father's money and killed him. Your mother had kept this secret from you to protect you. He owes you, Jack. The lady disappeared in thin air. Jack kept standing there and thinking. He surely owes me and my family. Far away, where the road ended, he could see a huge castle. He went up to the castle and knocked on the huge door. A giant woman opened the door. She looked scary and howled at Jack. What do you want? Uh, if you please ma'am, would you kindly give me some breakfast? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The giant woman, though looked cruel and ugly, had a kind heart and offered Jack a huge plate of English breakfast but warned him. You must finish quickly before my giant husband comes back and eats you. Then suddenly there was a huge knock on the door and the wife picked up Jack and hid him in a huge empty kettle. As the door opened, the giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense! You're mistaken. It's the ox hide you smell. So he sat down at the table and ate the ox that his wife had served him as breakfast. After he finished, he asked his wife. Get me my money bags. He started counting his money but he was so sleepy that he slept on the table. The whole room was roaring with his snore. Jack, taking an opportunity of this time, got out of the kettle, picked up the money bags and ran towards the door. Before the giant woke up, he climbed down the beanstalk and to his cottage and did not look back even once. He took a sigh of relief and ran to his mother. Mother, look what I got. We are rich now. The mother and the son lived quite comfortably. Till one afternoon, when his mother was away, he decided to go up to the giant's castle and see what was happening there. So he climbed up the beanstalk and reached the castle. There, standing at the door, he saw the giant's wife again. But she didn't recognize him because he was dressed impeccably this time. Uh, if you please, ma'am, he said. Will you give me some breakfast? Run away, you little boy. Last time a boy came, he stole my husband's money bags. But since she was kind-hearted, she offered Jack breakfast. At that very moment, the giant knocked on the door and quickly she hid Jack in the oven. The giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead. 
I'll grind his bones to make my bread. But the giant's wife once again assured him that he is mistaken and offered him his huge breakfast to eat. After eating his food, he asked his wife, Get me my golden hen. The wife got the hen and the giant roared in his voice. Lay. That very moment, the hen laid a golden egg and Jack was left amazed with what he saw. No sooner he saw the giant slipping into his deep sleep and once again he came out of the oven, picked up the hen and ran for the door. In the meanwhile, the hen began to cackle. The voice made the giant move a little but he kept sleeping. Jack climbed down the stalk and went straight to his mother and gave her the golden hen. The mother and the boy were so rich that they had money greater than even what they could spend. One day, he was sitting idle. The thought of the beanstalk crossed his mind again and he decided to climb it. No sooner he was at the castle, but this time he decided not to be seen and climbed the kitchen wall of the castle and hid himself in the oven. In came the giant, roaring louder than ever. Fee, fee, fo, fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I grind his bones to make my bread. But the giantess was quite sure that she had seen no little boy that morning and after grumbling a great deal, the giant sat down for breakfast. As soon as he got over with his breakfast, he called out to his wife. Bring me my harp! Sing! ordered the giant. Soon the harp started singing the most beautiful sounds ever heard and no sooner the giant fell off into his deep sleep. Jack, who was waiting for this moment, got out of the oven and climbed the table to grab the harp. But as soon as he started running off with it, the harp started shouting, Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to catch the sight of Jack running out of the kitchen door. With a fearful roar, he saw Jack running with the harp and dashed after him. Little Jack ran as fast as he could while holding the harp tightly in his hands. The giant, taking terribly long strides, gained on Jack and he would have been caught if Giant had not slipped over a boulder. Before he could pick himself up, Jack began to climb down the beanstalk and when the Giant arrived at the edge, he was nearly halfway to the cottage. The Giant began to climb down too, but as soon as Jack saw him coming, he called out, Mother, bring an axe! The widow hurried out with the chopper. Jack had no sooner reached the ground than he cut the beanstalk right in two. Down came the giant with a terrible crash. And that, you may be sure, was the end of him. But the mother had a very important advice for Jack. Jack! What the giant did to your father was bad. But you should not have been so greedy. He reaped what he sowed. But greed is also a bad deed. Jack agreed to his mother and promised to never be greedy again. And they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! That was such an adventurous story. Yeah, Tofu! And do you know why it was my favourite story? No? Tell me? 
The story was about a brave boy who wanted to fight against poverty and in a way he got a chance to take revenge of his father too. But in the process he forgot that harming the giant again and again was not ethical and stealing from the giant's house was also against his morals. Oh, that's quite a heavy thought for my little brain. <laughs> Let's go. We are late for dinner. Mom must be waiting. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.